tell you what the Singapore has done with respect to developing and implementing standards in the field of cloud computing services. Uh, in, in Singapore, uh, set all standards, regardless of whether they are IT standards, uh, food standards, electrical appliances standards, they are all covered by the National Standards Body, which is great. However, in this case, cloud computing services fall within the ambit uh, of IDA, which promotes the, the, the industry, the ICT industry. So, in order to facilitate the development of ICT specific standards, Spring and IDA jointly uh, supports an organization called the IT Standards Committee. The IT Standards Committee is the national IT standards body for developing and promoting the use of IT, ICT standards in Singapore. Within the IT standards committee, there are 13 technical committees. They cover things from a wide range from biometrics uh, to uh, e-learning standards uh, to uh, medical industry standards like HL7. So it can cover a wide range of standards. And two years ago, uh, the defenders community suddenly became aware that actually uh, cloud computing as an emerging technology trend is something that we need to watch and something we have to start to promote. So at IDA, through the National Grid Advisory Council, the National Grid Office, uh, spoke to the, the people in ITSC that uh, we have to start working on uh, standards that help the industry, the user industry, to, uh, to adopt the use of uh, cloud computing services. Interestingly, at about the same time, about two years ago, the international community, uh, there's an organization called the Joint uh, Technical Committee, JTC1, that coordinates standards development internationally for ICT standards. And they too came out with a work group that looked at cloud computing standards. So we begin to see that there's a need for such standards globally. And then we also saw the need in Singapore. So in February 2012, uh, February 2011, not sure, sure how is this year? February 2011, last year, uh, ITSC together with the National Grid Office, uh, we, we set up a, a task force to look at the development of uh, cloud computing standards. And this also actually uh, come about because there is demand. Uh, the National Grid Office uh, conducts survey uh, with industry and asks what's preventing you guys from adopting cloud computing services? So a few things uh, oftentimes comes up. One is they will say that, oh, uh, cloud computing, the word cloud computing promotes so many different things to so many different people. Right? I think yesterday there was a panel discussion that the facilitator asked, so what in your mind is cloud computing? And I think even the panelist has slight, uh, has slight uh, differences with respect to how they define or look at cloud computing. So there's this whole issue of uh, you know, people are not very sure what cloud computing really is. But really two very strong underlying undercurrents uh, 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 the, the making, stopping people are has, uh, getting hesitant to adopt cloud computing services. And one is uh, security. Uh, when we say security, this includes the issues of uh, data privacy. So users are often very concerned that when they put data into the cloud or their data, you know, uh, that they lose control and that there's lack of security. Uh, for those of us who are cloud system practitioners, we know that's oftentimes not the case. In fact, many cloud service providers can give you better security <coughs> than your IT uh, manager could. But that's another story. But it is a perception. That when you put things in the cloud, uh, security is a huge risk. 
Uh, the second area with respect to service level agreement. When a user go and buy cloud, cloud services, most users are unaware exactly to what level of service is the service provider committed to. In fact, most users uh, just blindly accept the agreement. And for that very reason, many users hesitate to adopt cloud computing services because they, they're not sure what they're getting to and they're not sure what are the recourse, what recourse they could have if, for example, the service provider did not uh, deliver uh, you know, the type of service that the user expects. Then there are a couple of other issues like uh, uh, you know, interoperability. If I buy a, a service from one cloud service provider, if this cloud service provider go bust, or this cloud service provider does not provide the service to my satisfaction, and I need to move my data, my application to another cloud service provider, uh, how do I do that? Uh, would the, would, would, would the, would the, the data still be uh, portable? Would the application that I develop, let's say, on uh, uh, IAS uh, infrastructure as a service from one provider be portable to another uh, service provider? So there's this whole issue of interoperability. So, uh, however, out of this list, two things uh, stood out very strongly. One is in the area of security, and the other is in the area of uh, service level agreement. So, the IT Standards Committee, through the Cloud Computing Standards Coordinating Task Force, uh, was decided to go about doing two what we call technical references. It's a TR30, TR31. TR30 covers security uh, for virtualization, virtualization security for server. And TR31, uh, it's a technical reference for security and service level guidelines for the usage of public cloud uh, computing services. So those are the, the these two areas, as I, should, I showed you earlier, the list of uh, kind of demands, the list of uh, user concerns. So we hope that by producing these two technical reference and making them public and through a process of promotion and education, a more and more users will become aware that actually uh, security can be managed, uh, service level can be managed, and hence uh, more willing to adopt cloud services. So uh, let's look at the TR30. TR30 refers to covers uh, virtualization security for servers. Um, as we all know, uh, virtualization is a key enabling technology uh, for cloud computing services. Virtualization essentially gives you a level of abstraction where a multiple logical machine could be run on one single machine or one single OS. The, the challenges that come with that is that you know, people are concerned that would this lead to issues of Similar issue if you are a user of public cloud services, which would lead to the issue of confidentiality, integrity, and availability of data when you have to share resources like that. So this particular technical reference tries to address such issues. And it covers essentially the, the gray area, the hypervisor level, as well as the OS level within the different uh, uh, booster operating systems. This is a fairly technical uh, document. Uh, it's, so it's really targeted at the enterprise infocom personnel as well as cloud service provider. The, the next technical reference is TR31. This is a technical reference that covers security and service level assurance for users of public cloud computing services and it covers specifically uh, software as a service and infrastructure as a service. So as you can see, some reflection attempt to answer, uh, you know, uh, so how do you ensure that the data I, I, I put on the cloud uh, is secure? Uh, how do I ensure that uh, uh, the migration issues are addressed? In fact, it also covers uh, um, uh, legal, 
issue with respect to what kind of recourse one would have if, for example, uh, secure, certain security breaches occur. And service level agreement uh, covers areas concerning how a service is managed and what are the things that a user should look for when they enter into a cloud computing uh, service agreement. As I've said, this, the focus on, on, of this uh, technical reference is uh, it concerns public uh, cloud computing services and cover SAAS and IAAS. So excluded is the PAAS and private and hybrid cloud. The, the way TR31 is structured is such that uh, uh, it's written in terms of uh, the risk with respect to uh, cloud computing services, public cloud computing for uh, SAS and IAS, and then looking at the mitigation steps and looking at the possible reports we can have. Uh, the TR31 also has a, a, an annex or an appendix where a checklist of the different things that a user of such services can look for and take off. And we hope that by providing a, a document like this, a user will be able to refer to it and hence be more confident about adopting cloud services and also be more confident when we go about uh, discussing with a cloud service provider their needs and their expectation of such cloud services. We believe that this same document could also be used by the cloud service provider even though it wasn't originally targeted as such. Because we think that if a cloud service provider make use of this document and develop and provide the services in accordance or in alignment with some of the specification and guidelines in this technical reference, uh, it will be easier for the user to adopt as well. So moving forward, uh, ITSC together with the National Grid Office, we will work with industry association uh, to promote these two technical references. Uh, in particular in August, the Singapore Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry is running a big industry event where Chinese businesses uh, and, and other large Singapore enterprises will be there. Uh, typically, they have attendance of 1,500 people. So we'll use that uh, forum uh, to promote uh, these two technical references as well as to uh, create a certain amount of awareness and, and bring people on board uh, to this service. And we hope by doing so, we will you know, reach the stage, as the previous speaker has said, you know, five out of every six business unit will adopt cloud services. Yesterday you heard uh, in Singapore they are thinking of only between 10% and 50%. So uh, we, we really think that uh, the use of standard uh, in this manner uh, would give cons uh, certainty and, and a feeling of assurance and confidence to the user to pick up such services. And if you are interested, you can buy this 2 TR off the Spring website and it. And then I was told to buy it between now and then call me and there is a discount. Uh, unfortunately, I don't, unlike many uh, uh, IT documents, you can just download a PDF. Uh, this has to follow the national standard, national body for standard, uh, where every standard document has to be purchased. Uh, so uh, the, the document looks like this. So pretty good, I think, uh, and it's been developed by uh, the two work group. The work group for TR30, the Virtualization Security uh, Technical Reference that's developed by a guy called Yao Singh, who's here, and a big one. And the second TR, TR31, the one that covers uh, security uh, guidelines, as well as service level issuing, that was developed by Wan Chi, who was the previous speaker yesterday from Kino Tech, and Kevin, and also Yao Singh. So Yao Singh uh, has a hand in everything, he's from the National Grid Office. So if you, if you want to get free PDF copy, you can maybe you know, it's possible to say that. <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope uh, those in Singapore at least will, uh, if you are from a user community, you might uh, want to get a copy of this. And like I say, even if you are from a service provider, you, you should get a copy of this because uh, reading this will tell you how to structure and how to position and present your service in alignment to this and you can tell your uh, customer that look, uh, our service is provided uh, in accordance to the two technical reference developed by the IP Standards Committee. And 
hopefully your customer will feel more confident in buying your service. So at this note, thank you for your attention.